Okay, so I decided to give it one more whirl. I just thought my previous histories were incomplete and that we needed to ride that starship into the sky once more and look upon all that science fiction has given us. From Heinlein to Herbert, Clark to Cameron, Asimov to Zamatin, and everyone in between. Will some be left out? Sure. I mean, I can't get them all. This ain't freaking Pokemon. But this is the most comprehensive documentation of sci-fi on the web. Or at least on YouTube. And I have a hell of a time doing it. So buckle in tight, kids, and make sure you get a window seat. We're going into Nick's Psychotronic History of Sci-Fi, Part 3. So this might not technically be science fiction, but I wanted to start with it. A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court is Mark Twain's timeless satire of knights, chivalry, and good literature. It involves a Yankee being bonked on the head one day and magically waking up in Camelot. While there, he meets King Arthur, Merlin, whose magic has been exaggerated, Guinevere, Sir Lancelot, and all the others. Twain launches scathing attacks on them, calling them stupid, backwards, primitive, hodunk, and all other manner of ignorant slaves. The Yankee, blessed with the gift of modern engineering, is able to begin reforming ye old England, instituting electricity factories, democratic governments, and adding all the conveniences of then-modern life. Oh, how much better it would get. Imagine if Twain had access to YouTube. Anyway, this is where I would consider science fiction, as it deals with the implementation of technology on the seemingly barbaric past. It's also about pulling the past out of its state of ignorance and embracing the rationality of the future and, of course, glorifying science. Twain was very much a fan of science and technology, being a close friend of Nikola Tesla, one of the most underrated geniuses of all time. I'm surprised Twain didn't write more science fiction. Holy crap, he did! In one story called The London Times of 1904, he describes a future wherein people are hooked into some kind of telephone technology that allows them to connect over long distances. In short, he predicted the internet. Take that, Al Gore! Also, doesn't this mean he wrote the first cyberpunk novel, too? Getting back on topic, while Yankee is a funny satire of the Middle Ages, it also serves as social commentary on what the big story was at that time. The reformation of the South at the close of the Civil War. You can see it evidently in the Yankees' actions, trying to bring civility to a backwards and corrupt society. Kind of like the modern South. He even talks about ending slavery specifically, as it's a big issue in King Arthur's time. I don't mean to get into spoiler territory, but at the end of the novel, all of his good is undone by the evils of human nature, as the War of Guinevere consumes everything he did for them. Oh well, I guess if you get tired of this planet, you can head off to Mars for a vacation, right? Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle, dandy. Mind the music.